Climate change often seems so distant. We know it's a problem, but it doesn't seem connected to our day-to-day -day priorities. As a result, we seem to be suffering from a problem of global procrastination. So we try to make climate change feel relevant by basically scaring the shit out of people. <laughs> With the coming extinction of one million species, among other very bad news, this is not hard to do. But if we focus only on the scary, immense, and sometimes apocalyptic impacts, it can backfire. And we can feel hopeless, we feel despair, and sometimes we'll have even less will to take action. Or, as many do, we turn to denial or ignorance to cope. So the question I've been exploring is this. How do we get these brains of ours to grasp the urgency of climate change in a way that drives strong, immediate, and sustained action? And if that weren't hard enough, how, how do we depoliticize this issue in this hyper-partisan time that we live in? First, as I was completing my studies, I found environmental economics as the answer. I thought as an undergrad that if you just give people information and, you know, get the incentives right, then all of our problems will be solved. But so far, for lots of reasons, that hasn't worked either. So I went and got my PhD in behavioral economics. Thanks, it was hard. <laughs> and I, I learned a lot. And I'll tell you, I'll save you seven years of your life. <laughs> Humans are complicated. <laughs> That's true. Information is never neutral. Framing values and identity matter. Emotions and instincts shouldn't be dismissed. They play a critical role in decision making. And, we are terrible at decisions with long time horizons and uncertainty. Four years ago, I gave a talk on this subject. At the same conference, another speaker, much more famous than me, told the audience that she has this dream where the kids of the future look at her and say, you knew about climate change. What did you do? Whew. On the flight home, this question echoed in my mind. I wanted my daughter, who was just 10 months old at the time, to know what I did and how I felt and what I had not yet done. So I opened my laptop and wrote her a letter for her to read when she was my age. When I wrote that letter, I realized that to her, I am not small, I am not powerless, to my daughter, I am the most powerful person in the world, and it is my job to protect her. While I wrote it, it, it hit me. This could be the answer. Looking back from the future could help solve the problem of global procrastination. Parental love is a universal value with a uniquely empowering frame. And this love for our kids transcends all political and cultural boundaries. So after that trip, I met Jill Cubitt, and together we created Dear Tomorrow. We've already reached millions of people, and just last month, we stood at the United Nations headquarters and launched a global parents coalition called Our Kids Climate. So the Dear Tomorrow approach is simple. We ask parents and grandparents and anyone rooted in love for the next generation to write a message and make a promise to the future. And we preserve that message in a historical archive for future generations to read. Then 
we ask that people share their message through social media and other forms of community art. You see, each writer is a trusted messenger for their own networks. And each message shares a unique, authentic, and powerful perspective on climate action. And something magical happens. When people address these letters to their own children, they move from seeing a gloomy apocalyptic future to a hopeful vision of what is possible. Behavioral science tells us that this kind of hope is crucial for inspiring action instead of paralysis. Opening up a conversation across time crystallizes the relationship between the, between the choices that we make today and the lives that our children will lead when they are grown. After people write or read Dear Tomorrow messages, we help them find meaningful climate action through our partner organizations who are already doing amazing things all around the world. So that way, people can turn this newfound empowerment into a pathway of sustained climate action. So, my dear audience, I invite you uh, to go home, tuck your kids in bed, or snuggle up to your dog, pull out your sweet vintage typewriter, and write a Dear Tomorrow message. Make a promise to just do more. Then you can submit it at deartomorrow.org and importantly, share that message with your friends and family and start the conversation about climate change from a place of love. You will be amazed at how powerful you feel and how many lives you can touch with your message. So tonight, what I want you to remember is this. We are addressing climate change from a place of love. Not fear, not anger, not partisanship, love. And the love a person has for their own child is the most powerful force on this planet. Thank you.